But this is the diner cabin site. And as we said, this had nothing to do with that diner party. In fact, it should be called the Hetherington Cabin. What was here originally, starting from the first part of the 20th century, was a game lodge. Hunters leased out this land and would come in and shoot. In 1951, a professor from UC Berkeley, William Hetherington, and his wife, Blenda, purchased 160 acres here for their summer home. The Hetheringtons converted the little hunting cabin into a residence. Mrs. Hetherington, who kept a journal, said they were quite distressed when they moved in because the land was in such poor shape. It wasn't just the hunting, it was sheep grazing that pretty much devastated the land. She said it was her goal over the term of their residency here to bring more to the land than they took out. So she tried to restore the land. They got rid of the sheep. They stopped the wood cutting. The one thing that she couldn't do, which frustrated her, she couldn't keep the state trappers out. Back then, the state trappers could come in and kill predators. They would come in and shoot bobcats and coyotes and foxes. So they were here for 21 years. They finally moved out in 1972, and they wanted the land preserved in its natural state. The state park acquired the land in 1973 and used it as a park residence for a while. Robert Doyle lived here from 1976 to 1981 or two when he was a college student and a seasonal ranger for the East Bay Regional Park District. Today, he's the district's general manager. Fortunately, the cabin didn't burn down in the 77 fire, but later when it was vacant, it became vulnerable to a different threat was discovered by local teenagers and they began having parties there it began to get vandalized and the coup de gras was New Year's Eve 1982 when it burned to the ground the party got a bit out of hand and I seem to recall walking by here on a hike up to North Peak on New Year's Day seeing the smoldering remains for years and years you'd see the bathtub and the toilet and the sinks as you walked by but the trash removal project here at Mount Diablo slowly started working at it, and it's mostly gone now. The entrance to the house is still there, the foundation, and some of the plants and shrubs that Mrs. Hetherington must have planted are still here. The Donner Cabin cleanup was part of a larger effort initiated by Bert Bogardis and his friend Rich McDrew after most cattle were removed from the park in 1994. And after the cattle were removed, the fences weren't maintained, a lot of them were just falling down and wildlife would trip on the barbed wire and horse people would trip on it and so we established this group, Rich called it the TRP or the Trash Removal Project. Since the TRP began in 2001, hundreds of volunteers have removed 855 tires, 113 tons of metal, 23,800 fence posts, and 1.2 million feet of barbed wire from Mount Diablo State Park. Bert and his truck are still central to the group's monthly work days. He's put in as much time as a TRP volunteer as he had as a Mount Diablo State Park Ranger. Now we've got a decision to make. Ordinarily, the best route up to the falls is to walk half a mile or so up the single-track Hetherington Trail, which starts at the base of the Donner Cabin site. After a big rain, though, the Hetherington Trail's two creek crossings can be difficult. Check out the first one. If you don't want to try it, continue on Donner Canyon Road, and we'll meet you at Stop 7, where we'll talk about the canyon's pine trees. If Hetherington looks good, you may be able to enjoy some wildflowers, including mariposa lilies, globe lilies, and gold fields in the spring. Keep an eye out for our state rock, Serpentine, and we'll meet you at Stop 6, which is all about ferns. <laughs>